Hi, Clutter Fairy fans. This is the Clutter Fairy Weekly for January 18th, 2022. I'm your co-host, Ed Gumnick, and I'm speaking with Gail Goddard, certified professional organizer and owner of the Clutter Fairy in Houston, Texas. Hi, everybody. The Clutter Fairy Weekly is the webcast and podcast that digs deep into the clutter that piles up between you and the life you want to be living. We explore the habits and behaviors that lead to clutter, and we suggest strategies to slow the accumulation reduce the collection, and comfortably manage the stuff we decide to keep. If you're new to our Zoom meeting, we want you to let you know that you can share your comments and questions via the chat feature, and I'll try to make sure Gail gets to them before we move on to another topic. You can also use the raise hand feature to let us know that you'd like to ask a question or make a comment yourself via audio or video. We are also streaming the webcast live on Facebook, so you can share your questions and comments there, and I'll relay them to Gail. We're going to start, as we usually do, by recapping our last weekly tittle. This week's assignment was to evaluate your approach to organizing in terms of how well it fit your motivation and ability to see whether a different strategy might work better for you. We'd like to hear from our participants in Zoom and on Facebook who revisited their organizing approach this week? Please let us know in the comments. YouTube viewer Cindy shared this comment. Swedish death cleaning worked in the basement to deal with the excess holiday stuff I no longer put out and things I had saved for the kids. I took photos and sent them to my children. They claimed what they wanted and I felt guilt free about donating the rest. Seven trips to Goodwill with full loads followed. It made an incredible impact on my storage space. I think different methods work for different parts of the house. I did a modified Marie Kondo method on my clothes. Folding clothes vertically made a real difference. It's so true that more than one method can be helpful to you. All of them are just thought processes to help you make decisions and reclaim your space and peace of mind. I think it's great that you put more than one organizing plan to good use and made such an improvement in your spaces. Congrats on seven car loads out of the house. You know when the car is full and you have to go seven times, you must have made a huge gap. You must have cleared out a big old space in the floor, in the basement. So good, good job. Everyone is clapping for you. Congratulations. M said, I discovered that my main motivation to declutter is fear fear that someone will come in and see my mess. Seems this is not a good thing. What do you, what do you, what's your reaction to that? I, well, I mean, we all have negative motivation triggers. <laughs> like I totally, I totally get it that, you know, sometimes you can't motivate yourself for a positive reason. You can only motivate yourself with a negative reason, but um, we wouldn't want you to only stay in that place and, and not be able to come around to, um, working on the project for its own benefit to you. Like you're the one that's in the house. You're the one that has to be in the space. And so a hundred percent of what you do makes your life easier. Even if it also makes it prettier for someone else to come in the house and see it, but you're the one that gets to look at it every day. And so you're the one that gets to benefit from it. Maybe it's just um, uh, spinning it around a little bit and saying, what is pretty for someone else is also pretty for me. What makes it look better for someone else makes it look better for me too. And if right now uh, your fear of someone else seeing it is enough to get you in motion, then maybe you go with it for a little while <laughs> until you can see it differently. I, I understand the it, not wanting to be operating from a place of fear all the time, but. Well, and I, I think you know there were some calls last week for another show about motivation so we might need to revisit that topic very soon um but it you know maybe a useful exercise for m and anybody who's feeling like their primary motivator is a negative one fear or shame or something like that to to sit down with a piece of paper and a, and a pen or pencil if you're the writing type or your craft supplies if you're more of a crafty, cra person. crafty type and do a make a list or a, a vision board even just a simple one that's about 
one or two positive outcomes that you're you expect that you're to aiming get for right for, the things that you want to get out of it yeah yeah that's a good point <clears throat> find something some find a positive focus to to at least accompany the fear right <laughs> <laughs> if not replace it you can be fearful and you can also be visioning um positive outcomes at the same time that's absolutely true good idea jimmy says i'm new but I've started several times. I have my stuff as well as inheriting my parents and my daughter's clutter. It's overwhelming. Mm -hmm. More than one person's stuff is always a lot. And it also makes the decision-making process hard when you feel like you're deciding about other people's stuff and not your own. That sometimes that, that emotionally feels like a, a, a bigger burden to be making choices on behalf of someone else. It makes it hard. Yeah, and or even... Even if it's not on behalf of someone else, just um, weighed down by your ideas about what they what they would have wanted or how they felt about it. Mm -hmm. It makes it uh, it makes it harder to make those shed decisions that you really need to make because what you're describing is your household's worth of stuff, your parents' household's worth of stuff, and then your daughter's household's worth of stuff. And that's three people's stuff all in one space. And that's too many. And maybe four people, if you have both parents or you have a parent and a grandparent that you inherited, you can end up with a lot of stuff in your house that is making um, your volume of work difficult. <clears throat> From that standpoint, go, go, towards the things that are easy to get started with first yeah and don't start with the stuff that is really hard and shut you down start with the stuff that you can do easily and work your way towards the stuff that's harder jc says i pretended i was moving to a new home as if it was a sudden move not pre-planned was more Ooh. draconian with stuff got a great amount done too that's a great idea that's hardcore jc good job um, uh, my client had to do that. That's my big client was like, oh, we're selling the house. Oh, we, we weren't planning on moving, but someone offered us money for the house and we're going to take it. So I guess we're moving now. And then it was like this big fire drill. So it's a great motivator to feel like you have to go, go, go right now. Good job. Jane says the reality hit me this week that decluttering by category is currently my best approach. Saturday, I work for three hours on one category and have three boxes and one bag of things to donate on Thursday. Yay. Good job. That's excellent. Anya said, I used five, I used five minutes matter today to get rid of expired medicine and old catalogs. Great maintenance. That is great maintenance and catalogs after the catalog season of death <laughs> like December is catalog hell and everybody sends out their catalogs like mad. And so this is a perfect time to go. Christmas is over. The buy the holiday buying season is done. I can now make all those catalogs go away and get control of my budget again. <laughs> Susan said, my goal was to make my home feel like a sanctuary instead of looking around at all the clutter and having its presence stress me out. That's a great focus. That's a very good goal. And a good for the other person who was asked thinking about being motivated by fear. It, that's a that's a positive vision spin. I want my home to be a sanctuary and I want it to be pleasant instead of stressful to look around the house. And that is a good positive goal to aim for. And I'm hoping that you are starting to feel some of that stress relief. That's awesome. Ellen says, love Marie Kondo for children's clothes twice a year to weed out the stuff that's too small, et cetera. And gathering from all different spots around the house is helpful since I have come across size four bathing suits in our beach bag that were three sizes too small, <laughs> but let them do their own folding. So she oh, turns the folding cute. tasks over to the kids. You got the kids folding their stuff. That's awesome. Anything is anything they do is one less thing you have to do, right? Good for you. Okay, let's get to our featured topic today. Our topic of the day. Not everyone has the resources to install custom storage solutions, field a team of professional helpers, or uh, a TV crew, as the case may be, <laughs> right? or, make, 
or make unlimited supply runs to expensive stores. But a modest budget shouldn't stand between you and the organized life that you want to live. Today, we're going to share a few lower cost organizing strategies for do-it-yourself organizers on a tight budget. And we're going to start out with the reminder portion of this discussion first and get that out of the way. Are you ready? It costs nothing to let things go <laughs> instead of trying to organize them. So reducing your volume can only help your project and, and help, your help the cost of your project as well. The less stuff you keep, the fewer organizing projects you'll products you'll need, and the less you'll have to spend. If you buy products first before you even get started, you'll buy stuff based on the expectation that you're keeping everything, and so you'll overbuy organizing products. Then you'll just have to organize the leftover organizing products. So buy later, get rid of stuff first, and it will change the amount you have to spend. Fancy is always more expensive. If you want to lower your costs, then aim for function over fashion. You can always decorate something for free at home. And if you want to make it fancier, then just don't spend a bunch of money on crafty stuff to decorate it. It'll end up costing you more than the original organizing product you skip. So don't get seduced by the crafty stuff that you got to have to make this cheap thing look better and then end up spending more money in the long run. Pay attention. Use crafty things you already have. Don't sink money in new. Okay, now that the less is more message is sent, we can talk about the budget-friendly ideas we have for you today. First up, we're going to talk about low-cost or no-cost help with your organizing project. Number one, family is an option, but it might be an emotionally painful one. Uh, they be budget-friendly, but they could cause too much other trouble. So buyer beware, buyer beware. Only work with family with whom you have a respectful relationship. If there's ever a time for respectful, <laughs> it's while helping someone declutter their personal belongings. On the flip side, make sure to offer help to another family member only if you feel like you have the patience to support someone in making their own decisions without judgment. If their decision-making pace and their choices are going to irk you, then you probably should only volunteer to drive donations to their next destination and not be in there helping them work. Friends are an option too, and usually come with less emotional baggage. So pick carefully though, so you don't regret asking for that help later. Pick the friend who is supportive and non-judgmental, as opposed to the friend who is very happy to express an opinion without much of a filter when they give it. You don't need that kind of commentary in your life, especially not while you're working on an organizing project. Uh, as a good reference point, you wanna pick your Betty White friend instead of your mod friend to help you. Professional help is an option too. The lower cost options are with the newer organizers, those who are new in business and haven't built up a big client base yet. You may have to ask all your friends and do some searching on social media. Newer organizers don't have big marketing budgets yet, so you'll have to put some effort into finding them like they're trying to find you. Ask your networks too, like church groups or professional organizations that you belong to or uh, book clubs or crafting groups. Someone in those groups is either starting an organizing business or know someone who is. Organizers will be trying to use their own networks the, and network with their existing groups. And you'll likely find them there hoping to reach out to potential clients. Just because they're newer doesn't mean they don't have the skill set. They probably have the skill set and they just don't have the clients. So it's a good place to start if you need a lower cost organizer to help you. Next up is sourcing products, especially this time of year. January is go month, which is, stands for get organized month, which means that right now is a great time to find product options. And most stores have some things available this time of year. Uh, Walmart, Target, Sam's Club, Dollar Store, Office Depot, even the grocery store, you name it, they've probably got an aisle of organizing products this time of year. Even a drugstore will have some low-cost bins or open containers this time of year. So most general stores have an aisle year-round, like Target and Walmart. They always have an organizing aisle. And then they change out the offerings with the seasons. So you can find lots of options, and you can find some budget-friendly ones, too. Remember to check out the clearance sections to see if anything pops up on Markdown. 
in terms of shopping, make sure you go with a plan. Don't buy everything you see, even if it's a deal. Instead, make a plan for the types of storage you want. Do you need drawer dividers to crowd your things in the drawers? Do you need boxes for photos or for craft supplies? Think about what problems you'd like to solve and keep those needs in mind when you start shopping for supplies. I need to, I need to straighten up my makeup in my bathroom drawer. I need the bookshelf to look better. I need to corral my craft supplies easier. I need the photos to be put away. I need some help in the kitchen pantry. Think about what your problem area is and what products would support those areas before you go buying so that you don't just randomly pick up organizing products because they look good. Because <laughs> they all look good this time of year. Used products and repurposed products are very budget friendly. You can find that kind of stuff from friends. Who do you know that has something they wanna get rid of right now? It can't hurt to ask your friends if they have organizing products that are, they're not using and that they're willing to send your way. And don't be put off if the used items look dirty. The good thing about plastic is it cleans up really easy. So a little elbow grease with some Dawn or 409 spray will recover almost anything that's looking a little dingy after a previous use. You can find some great stuff on Facebook Marketplace and at garage sales or resale stores. Garage sales offer items for pennies on the original purchase dollar. And Facebook Marketplace has some excellent deals, especially for furniture like cabinets or tables, et cetera. If you're trying to outfit an area with more storage, you'll find some cool options for low prices on Facebook, on the Marketplace on Facebook. Resale shops will have organizing items that likely never got used or were so lightly used as to be unnoticeable at all. So they should be excellent prices too. If you'd rather not spend any money at all right now, there are so many food storage container options that can be very low cost or free options for storage inside drawers and cabinets. It might take you a few weeks of collecting them as you eat the food, but you'll get the items you need eventually. You can try Gladware, which is leftover containers that are hard-sided, you know, they're, sculpt they're sculpted uh, ob containers, or Ziploc bags, which of course are totally flexible. They can hold lots of small pieces in a drawer of any kind. It's a great way to store like with like without taking up a bunch of room. You have to pick through the Ziplocs to find something, but it's easier to do that than to dig through a total sea of jumbled items in a drawer. You can recycle empty food containers of all kinds, and that will give you a free small item storage option. They are especially helpful when you're trying to capture and separate types of loose items in a drawer or cabinet. They can line a desk drawer with office supplies or sit in a drunk drawer or in the craft room setup or in the makeup uh, drawer in your bathroom. Naomi says, I get a lot of pleasure from setting myself a buy nothing challenge in organizing. My utility drawer dividers consist of a printer ink delivery box, a jam jar, a tea bag box, a dishwasher pod box, and two baggies. Yay! I love that. That is the definition of reuse. Excellent job. I think that works perfectly. And all you're really trying to do is separate the contents of the drawer, right? So they all help you do that. And that is great. And if it makes you um, twitch to not have matching containers or something, you can decorate all of them with the same paper or something. But great reuse. I'm proud of that. That was a, that was a good list of clever containers to grab. You can even take a cereal box. Uh, imagine a cereal box is a long rectangular cardboard thing. And you can uh, cut it down to about two inches high to help create small containers for the same kinds of things we've been talking about. Be creative about which way you cut the box too. So once it's empty, you can take the box closed again, like you can take the lid closed. And then you can turn the box on the long way so that you cut from the top to the bottom of the box on two sides, which gives you a long skinny rectangle as opposed to the small rectangle that comes if you cut the bottom off. So you can either do one way and get a shallow box that's smaller, or you can do it the long way and get two of them that are um, the, the height of the box. Or you can really cut it parallel to the front of the box, and that will give you two shallow trays out, made out of cardboard that can slide in somewhere too. So 
you can make a good use of cutting down little cardboard boxes any direction you want and come up with things and that way you can custom cut them to the height that you need and things like that if you have really shallow drawers for instance Will it last forever? No, but it is a structured cardboard with glued sides and it's built to be a square. And so it will support you for a while. Um, even if you only use it as a temporary until you come up with some other free option that's more sturdy. Pay attention to all the shipping boxes coming in. Um, she mentioned that she took an, a shipping box in, as one of her processes, one of her solutions. Often those small boxes can be re reused for free, of course. And you can even decorate them. And the liners of the box are sometimes just as useful as the box. So sometimes you open a box and then there's another internal structural container that's designed yeah. to hold something steady, right? Cardboard insets and corner yeah. pieces and yeah, yeah, yeah things that stabilize the, For the shipping, thing right? inside, right? Yeah, so sometimes those can be useful as well. Uh, you just have to get a little creative about what will go in them. <laughs> If they're a little bit too moldy, sometimes molded in shape may not uh, work, but a lot of times it's just a smaller square made out of a different material. And so it's just as useful. Mayo jars, cut down milk jugs, soup cans, mason jars, they can all be used to contain small items. Paper plates, some of the ones that are molded, they have more of a side, you know, they have a sort of more tray-like instead of just a, just a curve. You know, really thin paper plates won't work, but the ones that kind of have sides to them would work really well. And paper bowls and plastic cups can help you contain things too. They may not be highly durable over the long term, but they're also, also easily replaceable for cheap. So it's a good solution. Do you know a cigar smoker like I do? <laughs> <laughs> They've always got cigar, cigar boxes to get rid of. So find a smoker and make a deal for their empty boxes as soon as they finish all the cigars. Cigar stores will sell them to you for a few dollars a box, but better to find a cigar smoker who will eventually empty a steady stream of boxes and be happy to get rid of them. My dad sends me a box twice a year full of all the boxes that he's emptied and I pass them out to my crafty friends. So you too can find a smoker in your environment that has a bunch of cigar boxes they end up throwing out and instead they can give them to you. Do you have some old fashioned no wheel luggage in the attic? Or maybe your parents or your grandparents do. Luggage can be great stackable containers for blankets or loose fabric. If you're a sewer or a quilter and you have lots of loose fabric, uh, yarn that comes in large quantities will fit in luggage just fine. Uh, large amounts of craft paper, even your out of season clothing, it doesn't all have to be about crafts. It can be about linens or clothing being stored when it's out of season. So what is a piece of luggage but a big storage container? So make use of it for some big stuff. If you have a bunch of luggage around that you don't use anymore because you've replaced it with stuff you like better. We all have sort of a trail of forgotten luggage that sits in the back of a closet somewhere. Pull it out and use it as a storage container. Um, inbox trays are a nice tray style storage and they work in an office of course that's what an inbox tray is for but it's basically a tray right that's open and has side walls and it's sturdy and so they can work in a drawer uh, any kind of a drawer anywhere they can go in your dresser drawer they can go on a shelf in the closet they can go anywhere um, bookshelf um, it gives you a lip of usually about an inch, maybe a little bit, inch and a half or two inches, depending on the design of the inbox. But it is basically a fairly sturdy plastic or wooden box that gives you some way to contain some things on an open shelf or inside an open drawer. So make use of that. Then you can get your little cardboard cutouts and stick those inside the in tray. And then you have a whole portable tray of sorting stuff. And you immediately have a, a place to put all little bits. You can use it as a jewelry box even. So it's a good, um, it's a good option to repurpose it out of the office and into some other spaces. Now, those in trays that have open sides or have big holes in the side kind of makes them not useful for that. <laughs> but a lot of them are actually full-sided boxes with walls all the way around. And um, that's, those are the kind that can be repurposed. Okay. So those are some quick ideas for you right now. Um, let's see what other people have to say about that topic today.
Naomi says, and this is this is really more in response to last week's tittle. I'm working on developing an image of myself on a journey, lighten, mm. lightening the load I'm carrying. By the time I come to the end of my life, I am walking lightly. That's a great visual. I like it. And it and it spreads out the accomplishment time. Like you don't have to turn it around in two weeks. You can be slowly um, reducing your volume over time. I think that's a great visual and a, and a less stressful uh, target, right? To aim for. Ellen said, I thought about my stuff from a different perspective. What furniture am I always moving around? Got rid of numerous chairs, an ottoman and a footstool that never got used. Uh, now my son has built a huge fort from cardboard and is having a great time. <laughs> that's a good visual, isn't it? And it means that the floor is clear, like taking out furniture makes a huge footprint of blank space that you've cleared just by taking a few things out. That's great. Good for you. Ellen also shared, I have a whole tub of empty baskets, et cetera, in my basement from buying organizing tools too early. Well, maybe you need to share it with your friends who are organizing and offer them some of your extras. Yeah. Or even that that's if they're plastic containers, that's a really, those are really good candidates for, uh, or what do you, what do you call it? Urban recycling? Yes. Yes. Urban recycling, putting them at the curb and letting people the curb. them from your house. Doesn't curb. hurt if they get rained on, they won't right. be there long enough to get rained on anyway, but they won't be destroyed if they get rained right. on either. <laughs> the cardboard won't survive, but the, the plastic containers will. Let's see. One, one three three oh six said gonna wait until i'm done getting rid of stuff use all the excess organizational stuff i have to organize and get rid of the rest it happens a lot at my clients actually uh, i often have my assessment phone call in advance where i'm talking to them about what their project is and somebody will ask me are there products I need to go get before you come? And I'm like, Absolutely no, 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 <laughs> no, do not do that. Please stop. Because invariably I find tons of product in the house. that's just not being used correctly or used at all. And then I start shopping their own house and I use what they have already. And it's awesome. I hardly ever have to take product in. Um, if somebody's moving into a house and they want all new organizing stuff that goes with the storage of the house, um, or they might want, you know, I want all my stuff to be a particular color or shape or whatever. And I don't, you know, the stuff that I had doesn't work and they want to pay for that load in when they first moved in. But most of the time I'm working with people where they are. And as we go through and start throwing things away, we madly empty containers too. Like lots of the containers get freed up as we go through and start making choices about what's going to stay and what's going to go. And we let go of a whole bunch of stuff and suddenly there's a pile of empty containers in the corner. I'm like, well, I'm going to use that for this. Is that okay? And I just start, I just start repurposing them immediately. And so you can often find enough organizing supplies already in your house before you even go shopping. Clearing out, is it, uh, do the clear out first. Absolutely. Reduce, reduce. Um, Gay, who is with us on Facebook says she, she's, working to use full shelves and she and play tetris uh she <laughs> measured and got perfect boxes from costco baby ray's barbecue sauce and coffee beans bag boxes so hey. costco and stores like that often have loads and loads of boxes lying around you can collect them as you're doing your shopping or just make a pass through, you know, show them your card, make a pass through just to grab boxes. Right. Well, and the thing about it is a store like that, they get the box of 20 things. That's all the same product from the vendor that's selling it. And they're going to put all those 20 things on the shelf. So they get a whole bunch of much smaller boxes that hold product. And so they're constantly opening little boxes to put things away. I'm sure they'd be happy to let you take some of them away <laughs> and make them disappear for them. Stacy says, my favorite budget items are Sterlite shoe size bins and the next size up or Dollar Tree bins. Mm -hmm. But you have to be careful so those aren't clutter either. Right? You don't want to buy them in huge volume. And the other thing is that usually the dollar store or Target or anybody will have 
uh, little small trays that are uh, rectangles that are narrow and they're only a, a inch or two high or they'll have a bin that's like twice that wide you know maybe it's four inches by six inches something like that um, they all carry some version of those and you can buy two or three as a set and those are just great things to have around to help you corral stuff and they can sort of go anywhere inside anything so making use of those is a, you can find them anywhere. They're available often and they can solve a lot of problems fast. An anonymous user says, I have been trying out being on Zoom with another person and doing something at the same time, like organizing. Another person called this body doubling. Yes. Or sometimes I look for clutter buddies and share what I'm doing with them. Accountability with your friends is great when you're sitting around talking about what you've done. It helps with the motivation in terms of, um, you know, they're cheering for you because you got something done and you have a moment where, you know, you're going to have a meeting, you have a scheduled meeting with them and you got to show them something. So you better get something done to show them, right? It gives you a little bit more um, deadline driven incentive to get going. Yeah. That's really awesome. But body doubling is a great thing. S sitting with someone and while they're working, how I participate in that process is that I will pre-sort things for people to work on, or I will wait for that person to say I'm stuck or I don't know what to do. And then I'm there to ask, answer the question um, to sort of quiz them about why they're getting stuck and what's hanging them up. And then I can quiz them past the problem and then they can go back to it again. But just having the company helps keep them motivated and going. Even if it's just that we're chatting while we work, uh, and it makes it easier some people just you know they just want companionship while they work and yeah. zoom has made a great uh, job of making that available even though somebody can't drive to your location you can zoom with your friend out of state and have them be supportive of you even even though they're not nearby yeah well we've talked before about uh and we've we've had people who came to our face-to-face -face meetups who paired off as teams and they'd work you know one one week at her house and then the next week at her house but especially if you're doing particularly tedious projects just having the company just having someone to talk to while you are going through working. it mm -hmm. and then then you do have that that backup there when you find the one decision that's really really getting you stuck to be able to say, what do you think? That stymies you, yeah. yeah. Well, and it's also allows you to go, uh, you know, something that you see makes you laugh and you can share it with them. Something that you see makes you sad and you can share that moment of emotion with someone and then keep going. And so from that standpoint, I think it's really helpful just to have a companion along the ride. Uh, Stacy says baby wipe and diaper boxes are great and sturdy and can be DIY'd. Yes. And Craig suggests small paper cups became my go-to desk drawer dividers. There you go. He also says silverware dividers are great in the bathroom. Toothbrushes and toothpaste are similarly, are surprisingly similar sizes to utensils. Yeah, you segmented boxes, right? And so it's the segment, the segment portion of it is how you keep the stuff from flowing in and out in a tide of stuff every time you open and close the drawer, right? So having that segmented box is great and yeah the, there's lots of cool expandable ones that are designed for utensils but that would work in the bathroom as well your recycling bin should be the first place to shop <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> there might be some things you haven't even thought of and well and, and um naomi's suggestion about the uh pod boxes the dishwasher pods yeah Those dish dishwasher pods come in plastic containers that seem like you know they would withstand a nuclear blast they are so heavy and thick <laughs> and the lid snaps on very securely right and m says the square hydrogen peroxide bottles make good containers if you saw off the top oh yeah yeah and i saw and, somebody uh, say velveta boxes on the other side that's a great idea well and rubbing the you know rubbing alcohol also comes nowadays we probably all have rubbing alcohol bottles 
kicking yes, around in right. our recycling, right? We've been using to clean and, with, yes. And they make those square ones that pack nicely in a, you know, for shipping. And, mm -hmm. and for the same reason, they pack nicely in your drawer. Craig also says, my wife is a master of customizing with cardboard and blue tape inside drawers. <laughs> blue tape. It's a miracle. You can put it on, take it off. It's fabulous. Craig also mentions prescription bottles and film canisters. If you still have those, those teeny tiny, little teeny tiny yes. plastic uh, containers with the Those with are lids. craft room staples for sure, <laughs> because you can put a lot of little bitty falderall in those little bitty containers and the lids snap on and off and it's easy to get to them. Lorraine mentions uh, go to Total Wine, which will sell them for 50 cents. I guess they sell, sell their probably the segmented liquor boxes oh you know, yeah have the okay. inserts mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and nan said i've been putting aside smallish boxes of all sizes bubble wrap from shipments packing paper etc and storing it all in a spare bedroom that way i will probably have all the packing material i need when i donate fragile items as well as mm -hmm. boxes for separating items in cupboards or drawers it's Good working job. well and i can shut the door on the mess <laughs> that's where the spare bedroom comes in handy yeah you just want to watch that mess get lower and lower and lower as you do more and more decluttering well she says this space will remain will remain the packing room until i finish decluttering the house yeah i've been great. at it for two years and expect it will take another 12 more months well connie says be careful i started to do that and it just avalanched now i am steadily reducing the number of boxes i saved <laughs> Yeah, you get into a, a habit, right, of saving yeah. stuff, and you just keep saving way beyond what you could possibly use. I want to sh sh shout out to Isaac, uh, who, who is watching from Africa on f Facebook. Oh, hi, Isaac. Yeah. How are you doing? Thanks for checking in with us. Oh, my goodness. That's a new place. We haven't had anybody from Africa before, I don't think. Or at least they haven't told us they were. They haven't yeah. told us there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Welcome. Glad you're here. Catalina said, I got rid of 90% of clothes that no longer work for me and started using a, a two-shelf small armoire. I began using really nice Target store bins on the shelves with clothes I kept, but I couldn't see what I had in them unless I pulled them out and they were heavy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I found a TV box and cut it in half long ways and taped the sides to the measured shelf, shelf dimensions. Then I bought pretty dollar store contact paper and covered the shallow boxes I made. And now I can see what I have and I can even pull them out if I need to, to just need to just enough to see what I can't see by opening the armoire doors. Right. Great that's solution. Great. That's a great, and that's totally DIY, right? Like that was including decoration. So that was an easy way to solve the problem. And I think it raises a good point, which is we tend to buy containers and we think we have a, whatever that drawer cabinet shelf space is. And we should have a container that fills the whole thing up, except then you can't see what's in it without pulling the box out. And so if you find that to be a barrier to entry, if it annoys you, if it prevents you from functioning well, then you probably want to consider, you know, here's the square and you want the container to be two thirds of the square so that you have another third to look in and see down and be able to grab the edge and tilt it a little bit and make it easy to see what's in there. And she did a good job adapting that. Instead of having them be tall, she made it more shallow and made it fit. That's good. On the subject of, uh, of uh, body doubling and, uh, and what do you call that, virtual co-working? Yes. Um, Diane says, sometimes having someone just agree that an item is indeed cool helps me let it go. Right, just to have them, them see what you see in it. Yeah. And support you in that. And then you can let it go anyway. Yeah. You know, my, uh, I've told this story before, but it's been a really long time since I told it. Uh, but, you know, when you were helping me clear out the house that I sold in yeah. 2008, I had a little tchotchke, a little shot glass made of ceramic from a trip to Mexico that I'd taken in a year when I was much younger. <laughs> right. And telling you the story about where it came from was sufficient for me to realize I don't have to have this. I have the story 
the thing didn't really serve a useful purpose. I, I think I kept toothpicks in it or something like that, but yeah. you don't even really want to store your toothpicks out in the open somewhere because they're accumulating dust at the same time mm -hmm. that they're dispensing tooth toothpicks. Right. But so yeah, just, just showing somebody the thing and telling them the story about it can be enough to be ready to set it free. And to remind you that the memory isn't in the thing, but in your head. Yeah. Right. Like it was, you had the story to tell about your trip to Mexico with or without the shot glass. And if you're worried, if you're experiencing memory decline or worried that you might, if you have a family history or something like that, you can still take the, take a picture, save the picture. Right. So that it's available digitally. So that the trigger is still there. Yeah. But that you are not um, having to keep up with it to, to have the memory trigger. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You can remember it without having to dust it. <laughs> exactly right. Who wants to dust it anyway? None of us. We don't want to be dusted. On the subject of the room full of supplies, Emily Sue says, the keywords are use it. My tendency is to collect storage containers and have a pretty collection instead of using them for organizing belongings. <laughs> well, and years ago, years ago, I helped a friend in Dallas declutter her garage and she and her husband both would take every shipping container they got and go throw them in one bay of their two car garage. And so there was a pile of shipping boxes floor uh, to way over my head of good boxes that they might need to ship things you know, it was a and it was just their habit they opened the box they got rid of it by putting it in the garage but what it by the time i was tearing it down it had been out there for so long that the bottom third of the boxes had become damp rotted mousy has mousies had moved in and out there Yikes. was a, you know, I mean, it had become a biohazard at the bottom because they'd been there for so long. And they're like the, the mice, they, they lived in, and they had a field in the backyard and the mice were like, Hey, it's warm in here in the cardboard. We like this in the winter. And so it became a mouse house and it was just, um, you know, gross. And so it, the collection can become a hazard if you keep it long enough. So you don't want to do that. Move it along, recycle it, let it go. Right. Naomi says some people are more bothered by visual clutter. The sight of miscellaneous different makeshift storage items would distress them. So no shame in actually buying matching sets. Right. That's true. And we are not suggesting that if you see the, the solu a solution you like in a store and it's within your budget, go for it. Because especially if it really just solves your problem perfectly. Yeah. You should do it. Yeah, today he was just talking about how to not uh, bust your budget completely uh, at, by buying really expensive organizing projects. So products. So well, and people have lots of great ideas that are in the chat. Uh, Angela mentions the gallon-sized clear water jugs, like Crystal Geyser or Target brand, are great to repurpose for storage. Mm -hmm. When using a drawer, I tend to cut them down to the height, short enough to fit in the drawer. They're deep, which makes them much better than the short trays sold in store there you go see that's a good adaptation the way you like it i like it and the, you know like you said the milk jugs are not super clear but all the most of the water ones are very right. very clear so they're easy very easy to see through and to see what's in them and that's great and Catherine says worry about picking up bugs from some of those areas and you don't want to use anything that's been in direct contact with food we're only we're talking mostly about either plastic things that can be washed out washed out completely or paper things that were holding your cardboard things that were holding other containers inside and you still have to be careful about cardboard if the cardboard has not been kept pretty meticulously clean you don't want to use it it's true Okay, we are running out of time, so we should talk about our tittle. The tittle this week is the five-minute digital declutter. This week's assignment is to spend a few minutes reducing the accumulation of clutter in your electronic life. 
Getting rid of stuff you don't need can free up space, save you valuable time, and extend the useful life of your devices. So number one, let's take inventory of your smartphone, tablet, or computer. Are there apps that you've tried once and never launched again? Uninstall anything that you don't use. Next, you want to scan your email inbox for those subscriptions it, to which you've lost interest. The newsletters that you don't open, the ads from places that you bought things before that you don't ever shop again. Unsubscribe from a few mailing lists. It doesn't take very long. It takes a few minutes, and it will be that many less things you have to delete, delete, delete on the other end. Review your downloads folder and purge out unneeded installers, PDF files, images, or any of the myriad other kinds of files that get downloaded in the course of using your devices. You know, on that note, one of the things I, I noticed was that everything, I use WhatsApp to communicate with a couple of groups. Mm -hmm. And if you're not careful, you can, there's a setting that saves everything that anyone attaches to the uh, files on your phone. Uh, uh, okay. You might want to turn that off. <laughs> right. <laughs> you might not want to let them do that, right? So it's worth it to go through the downloads and see what you can get rid of. Browse your photo collection. This is the last one. Go look at your photos and delete the images that are out of focus or badly lit or incomprehensible or redundant. Keep only your favorite shots. And don't forget you have been taking pictures of, oh, I'm taking a picture of this because I can't read the label and I want to make it bigger. Or I'm taking a picture of this because I want to see if this is the brand that my husband wants me to buy. And right. once you've had the decision, then you can kill the photo. And we forget yeah. to go back and do that kind of stuff. So yeah. It's a good one to go filter for. I have a lot of photos on my phone of, can you believe this idiot parked the car, their car like this, or <laughs> is this yeah. the stupidest bill? Isn't this the stupidest billboard you've ever seen? And right. You and don't really you need get... that after you show it to the person you took it for. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we're going to recap. You want to look at your apps and delete what you don't use. Look at your email for subscriptions and unsub unsubscribe from things you're not reading. Look at your downloads folder and kill the stuff that you don't need anymore and browse your photo collection and delete images that you can let go of now. And then come back and tell us about it next week. You can also make a note of where you, where to find the show notes, cfhou.com slash tcfw104. We'll have the complete text of the tittle as well as a link to the YouTube video and the podcast. You know, I, I used to say by the evening of the day of the webcast, but lately it's usually been by mid-morning the next day because you're takes a morning a little, guy you're a morning takes a little time to get it all together i want to remind those who are with us live in zoom or facebook that we also have a youtube channel with almost 200 videos on a wide variety of organizing topics how shocking is that <laughs> visit cfhou.com slash youtube while you're right. there subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon next to the, the subscribe button if you'd like to get notifications when we post new content. We also want to say a special thank you today to Mary for becoming our newest Patreon supporter. If you'd like to help support our efforts with a recurring monthly donation, please visit cfhou.com slash Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Your contributions help us offset the cost of producing the weekly webcast, and will help us fund new projects that we have in the works. Thank you for your support, Mary, and all our generous underwriters. Thank you, Mary. We will be back next week, Tuesday, January 25th, at noon U.S. Central Time, live in Zoom and streaming on Facebook. January, as Gail mentioned earlier, is Get Organized Month, a time when many people embark on new decluttering goals or try to revive projects where they've gotten stuck. If you're not sure where to start or restart, we've got you covered. Next week, we are going to offer pointers to set yourself up for decluttering success or breathe new life into stalled organizing plans. Join us next week for Get Off to a Strong Start or Restart in Go Month 2022. Yay. <laughs> I have a lot to say about that. So we want you to be able to 
um, get some good advice about how to get going. If you're watching this on YouTube, we'd love for you to join us live to get notifications about upcoming events. We invite you to join the meetup group by visiting cfhou.com slash meetup. You can also follow us on Facebook by visiting cfhou.com slash Facebook or join our mailing list by visiting cfhou.com slash subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, we send a weekly email that has a link to the YouTube video and a link to the show notes and a link to where you can sign up for the next meeting on Meetup. So that's all in there if you subscribe. And we do not spam you. We send one email a week and hardly ever anything else. We love to hear from you. So please keep those questions, comments, and topic suggestions coming in YouTube, Facebook, or anywhere that you find us. You can always reach us through our website at clutterfairhouston.com. Thanks, everybody, for coming. It's great to see you. And I hope that you're getting going on your projects in January. And we will help you along with that next week. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.